Hey guys, uh, I'm just going to give you a quick run through of how I have achieved a similar tone to John Mayer's Slow Dancing in a Burning Room clean guitar. And if you haven't seen already, I have done a video of how I create a bass tone using the Muir GE300. So this tone is done entirely with the Muir GE300. And I'm going to run you through what I've done and why I made decisions like that um, with Muir GE Studio. So um, at the end, I'll also like to show you a example of it in a mix with the bass tone that I've used, and that will give you a bit of context. No, it's not perfect, and I don't actually own a Fender Strat so I am pretty sure John Mayer's favorite car, uh, car, favorite guitar is a Fender Stratocaster, at least in the time that he did this song. I think he's gone to PRS and gets custom guitars made by them, similar to Stratocasters. Anyway, um, my guitar is a Fender Thinline Tele with, um, dual humbuckers and the way I have the settings on the guitar is to have the tone knob at full brightness so full how would I say clockwise position and my pickup switch is centered so I'm using both the neck and bridge pickup and that gives it a bit of a twang in the lead part which does not really resemble John Mayer's um, tone. I did not make it for that. I just added a lead overdrive sound. To do that, um, I in the recording, I basically switched it over to the neck pickup. Otherwise, it was a bit too twangy for that part. So here is the sound of my guitar without any effects on. And I'll run you through the amps, EQ, and speaker cab simulation and what choices I made and why, and also my reverb and delay and overdrive. I've used effects A and effects B, and you can switch these on and off for different purposes. So let's get to it. Firstly, with the amp, I've got the Kali LS1, uh, sorry, channel one, and that is a rectifier um, Lone Star, I believe, in its clean channel. And I chose this not because John Mayer uses it. I don't believe he uses that. I chose it because the sound has a smoother breakup. And when it gets a little bit dirty, it's a lot smoother than a lot of the other amp models on here. So let's have a listen to it with that. <laughs> still in its queen, uh, clean channel. Many, many tongue slips going badly here, but let's just continue on through it. So next is the cab sim. I've used the US, US Deluxe 1x12. The reason I chose that is because his sound has a little bit of a boxy tone to it, and if I could have gotten the right sound with it, I probably would have chosen a 1 by 10 just because that has an even more boxy tone and it's a little bit um, frequency restricted. It doesn't have super high highs and it doesn't have super low lows and that's how I kind of perceive the John Mayer tone. So that's already reasonably well there. And next I chucked in an EQ and I picked a G10 and I just cut some frequency in the low, left a lot of it how it is over here. And um, if you want to get even closer to mix ready tone, you can drop this and this a bit and then you'll get less boom, so.
doesn't fight with the bass when you do that. So, but anyway, just for jamming by yourself, I recommend keeping it here. And then moving on from that, I've dropped some highs because, as I said, the frequency in the tone is not as bright as it's perceived. The mix does come across as a very clean, bright sound, but it's not quite as bright if you listen carefully through very um, good quality speakers. Then we jump into the overdrive. Now let's listen on and off. And I actually use this to cut away a lot of the highs and mids and with the... I couldn't actually explain fully why I chose those settings. It just sounded good. And we'll go on from there. Chucked in a comp. Um, I I don't have the exact comp that I want on here. And again, for the overdrive or distortion, I picked one in there, but I don't completely love the way the Moor does overdrives. I think there's a little bit of a fizz in the underlying sound that is not there on a lot of them and I will compare it to my... I've got a MXR custom modified overdrive and well sorry badass modified overdrive and it's much smoother. <laughs> And now we'll go back to the one that I've chosen for the Moor. You can hear that underlying fizz that happens. I wish Moor would work on that because, well, to be fair, I don't have a tube drive and I don't know if it actually sounds like that, but I, I hear this in nearly all of the overdrive pedals, that fizz. <laughs> But they managed to improve that with many of the amps, so I'm sure that they could do that with the overdrive pedals. Um, I, I accidentally engaged the pedal that I had for the lead tone, but we'll get to that one later. We'll jump over to um, the reverb and delay. It's no secret that there's a spring reverb type sound on the album. Now, there's two places you can put this. Depends if you're jamming by yourself or if you're recording this for studio purposes. If you put it after the cab, it's going to be more spacious seeming and feel like it has a hall reverb or something like a plate behind it. So if you put it before the cab, you are going to get a much more realistic um, spring tone and it's not going to be as spacious, but for the sake of jamming at home alone, you're going to enjoy the sound of it and feel more immersed in your playing if you put it after the cab and after any other equ. EQ that you might have. It has to be in the last two slots, I'd say, where delay is the only other one that could be after it. And that would have to potentially be a stereo delay. Not so sure, but let's go back to the cab and let's have a look at my settings here because I would, I probably do things that many people don't on this. And it achieved a tone I liked. I've chosen the MD441 mic. I've taken it off center a bit and moved the distance out a little. I don't have the second mic um, mixed in with it. I've taken the low cut to 148, otherwise it's about, it's too boomy for the mix. So take it back up to somewhere around there. And then I've got high cut um, quite far along. I actually began with it a bit further along. But if I take that away, 4041 hertz. You might not notice it fully, but it's there. 4041. Oh, that'll do. 
chucked in some early reflections to get a bit more boxiness. <laughs> Output's quite high. I was struggling to get the level up to my other effects. So we'll jump over to. We've done reverb, but let's explain what I've done here. Pre delays quite late. Um, I actually struggle to hear a huge difference in pre delay with spring reverb for some reason. Um, my decay is at 39, my low cut, um, if I don't have that low cut there, it creates mud for a mix situation. So I've cut that off at 208 hertz, and my high cut's not done at all, keeping that um, twing sort of sound going. Mixed at 24, spring length is 82, that, and the spring depth um, increased the amount of time that the spring wobbles for so and how deep that wobble is so if it's like wah, 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 or wah, 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 it never goes that slow it um just increases uh the distance that a spring is and that means it moves slower and the pitch is potentially lower um and the amount of wobble is obviously how hard it gets hit each time, um, like the depth. And so next we'll go on to the delay. I put delay in there not for the mix so much, but for playing alone. It adds space. I've got dual delay um, because... I wanted it to sound stereo with a bit of width and feedback 54, mix 10, low cut is off, high cut is quite far down. Reason being, you'll hear it in a sec, it makes it more ambient. It's too obvious. So I'll go back quite far. Oops. And you can hear how much more muted it sounds. So the time is 4.55 for this. Um, just set it up to how you, well, what tempo you'd probably play it at. I just did what felt best for playing slow dancing in a burning room. Um, level 1 is at 50. Level 2, 465 milliseconds. Um, I don't know if you can get all of these settings that I have on the amp and cab. Um, the thing that I forgot to do, and I'll go back to that, is show you all of my settings properly and run through them um, on the amp section. So uh, the pan is full left and right. The time for this one is slightly different, 10 milliseconds different. And if I if I do that, it sounds good. But if I go back to 455 for this, it's mono. And if I go to 475, it's very close there. It starts losing timing with the other one a bit too obviously. So, another setting that would be great for Moore to put into the dual delay is rather than 465 milliseconds, you should be able to delay the delay by a couple of milliseconds or whatever you want, rather than each delay repeat being an extra 10 milliseconds or whatever, delay exactly the same delay by a few milliseconds and then it won't um, it won't increase the distance between delays as you go along with a stereo sound or make a stereo and a ping pong option for all delays which would be very versatile and very cool I know it won't emulate many pedals but that would be an excellent addition now after that Oh, let's go back to the amp settings. So I've got the gain at 19, bass 45, 
mids 40, treble 34. I don't want this to be too bright. I've got it in original mode. The other one sounds too mid forward and no bass. Um, use the uh, US Deluxe 6L6 preamp um, tubes and the preamp out's at full presence is quite toned back because otherwise it becomes too twangy and bias is a lot lower than I often choose to do it. It's just um, it created too much body for the sound. Um, bias sometimes also increases the sustain, so just adjust it to taste. It might actually be a great way to change the dis the difference between a humbucker and a single coil by lowering it. So I've got it there so far. Now for recording I have a effects B set as an EQ, which cuts out some lows and cuts out some mids. And again, I can hear that fizz, which I don't love, and I wish they would remove that. Um, what else? So now, um, if you haven't already watched my tone building for a bass guitar tutorial and you want to be able to create a mix like the one you're about to hear, go watch that tutorial. I'll put a link up in the um, description and on the screen and you'll be able to watch that and build the same tones that I have. So here is with the... Um, <laughs> The extra overdrive pedal engaged, I've got that set to a pedal, so I can click that on and off. Alright, let's move over to Reaper, and we're going to have a look at this song that I've just thrown together, which may resemble slow dancing in a burning room, but it's completely original. So as you can see, they mix quite well together and obviously it's not exactly the same as John Mayer's sound because I'm not John Mayer. I don't have John Mayer's fingers and he's a way, way, way better guitarist than I am. Um, that's how this tone sounds with a completely unexceptional guitarist. <laughs> uh, so... If you like this video, please chuck in a like. If you really hate this video, just press that thumbs down 
button twice. It would really, really make me happy if you did that, if you really hate the video. If you want to see more of this content, please comment. Or if you have any suggestions for how to make things better, please comment. And if you want to see more content from me, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it and it would really help me move forward with YouTube and make better videos in the future. But any constructive criticism is welcome and um, if you want to share what you've done with this tone that I've made and the bass tone, I would absolutely, absolutely love to hear what you've done. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.